Hello guys and welcome back. So today you join me on the desktop where we're going to be putting together a gaming PC. So it's not your generic custom gaming PC. This is in fact an idea I've been wanting to put together for a while now and it's the workstation turned into a gaming PC build. So as you can see we're on eBay here and we've got ourselves a HP 400 G2 mini tower. It's got an i5 4590S running at 3 gigahertz. It's got Windows 10 Pro, which is incredible as a Windows 10 Pro key is 15 pounds or so. And then obviously you need a USB thumbstick to install it. It even comes with a 120 gigabyte SSD. It's got a 500 gigabyte secondary hard drive running at 7200 RPM. And it comes with two four gigabyte sticks of DDR3 running at 1333 megahertz, which equates to a total of eight gigabytes. Well done, Jack, you can do maths. So I'm sure a lot of you have seen videos based on these workstations turned into a little budget gaming PC and that's great. However, today I'm going to show you how you can still do that in 2022 at an absolutely great budget. So in total for this gaming PC, it cost me less than 84 Great British Pounds, which I think just from quick maths is about 110 to 115 dollars so this pc is affordable to pretty much anyone i mean even as a workstation pc for 2022 this pc alone works great yeah it's only got an i5 fourth gen but it still runs great it's got an ssd so it's snappy and it's got eight gigabytes of ram which is more than enough for workstation needs paid 33 pounds for this pc as well as eight pound 95 posting so that's less than 42 pounds posted to my door and bear in mind it came the next day as well but this is the foundation for this pc build everything we need to start this gaming pc off okay so now we're on everyone's favorite used graphics card market <laughs> Uh, so this is CEX, this is a store that is based in the UK, I think there's some shops in stores in Ireland and in Europe as well, but I use this store quite often in the UK, I mean the card you can see here is the ATI Radeon R9 360, the 2 gigabyte version, as you can see the lovely stock Sapphire version there is, uh, is brilliant, this isn't a version I got, so I was just shopping in town and then I walked past CEX like I always do, have a look in the little window and I noticed there was a graphics card in the window, this is very rare, there's never graphics cards pretty much anywhere, so I, it caught my attention, I went inside and I noticed it was this R9 360, as you can see it looks a bit poor, it's lacking in a few places and the thing that won me over was the fact that it didn't require a six pin or just any external power whatsoever so i bought this in a heartbeat i went home and i ordered the p well i bidded on the pc and within the next day i got my pc i had my graphics card because i managed to find it locally which <laughs> doesn't really happen either in stores for the total of 84 pounds and i'm not saying you'll get this exact pc for 40 pounds you know including posting like i did but you can get very similar ones you know like the dell optiplexes are very common at this price point i just typed in workstation i5 and this is the one i came i, I saw it as an i5 it came with an ssd eight gigabytes of ram i didn't even care what brand it was from the fact it was from hp was great and i got really lucky but you can find these around this price mark then you know maybe with extra posting on bids if you did want to just buy one out you are looking for similar specs around 60 to 70 pounds but even then in my opinion that is an absolute bargain you can barely buy yourself a power supply and a case for that in the UK. For the price of a new case and a new power supply, you can get yourself a brilliant workstation computer, which admittedly doesn't look as nice and it's not as upgradable. That's not what this is about. This is just to get you through the first obstacle of PC gaming, which bear in mind will give you a very pleasant gaming experience. So now most things have been covered. I would just like to say I did order a 16 gigabytes of RAM. The eBay listing didn't have any pictures of the internals of this computer, so I just ordered a cheap set of 16 gigabytes. One thing I'll say is I didn't need to as it came with eight gigabytes of dual channel. Like I said, it didn't say that in the listing, but it did. So I've just put the 16 gigabyte sticks to the side. They'll come in handy in the future, so I'm not sad I got them at a very good deal. And in my opinion, it's not necessary to do this either. So anyway, without further ado, I think I've covered most things. If you do have any questions, please make sure you put them in the comment section below. I will be sure to answer them as I am trying to get through as quickly. I don't want it to be long-winded and boring. I just wanted to tell you I've got a workstation. The specs have been on a screen. You can see what graphics card I've got. You can try and find the same one. Uh, they are difficult to come by, but you can, you know, there's other options as well, like I had stated earlier. But let's get into the benchmark numbers because that is what 
you people want to see. You want to see that you can buy an £84 PC and you can play games on it. And to be honest, that's what I'd be here for too. So let's get right into the benchmarks. Okay, so the first game we've got is CSGO. I'm going to be testing six games in today's benchmark pool, just so we can get a brief look of how this PC performs. And if you would like to see any more games tested on this machine, be sure to leave a comment and I will consider making a benchmark video on this PC on a lot more games. So just let me know if that's something you'd like to see. So starting off with CSGO, we're playing at 10 1080p on the lowest settings and we got ourselves an average of 153 fps, a 1% low of 101 and a 0.1% low of 74. So Counter-Strike ran absolutely perfectly, no issues whatsoever. I was also playing on a 144hz monitor and it was a great smooth experience. Didn't feel any stuttering whatsoever, even though the percentiles on the graph may show different. The game was very smooth and I enjoyed this experience. Bear in mind, most people that will be playing on this budget system will most likely only have a 60 hertz monitor or maybe a 75 hertz, so you'll be 100% exceeding that. In games like Counter-Strike, the higher the FPS, the better, of course. I'm very happy with these percentiles, especially for an £84 PC. So overall, CSGO was a good start. We're going to slowly get into the harder to run titles and we'll try and push this thing to its knees. So next up, we've got Valorant, once again playing at 1080p. We're at the lowest settings simply because this game looks absolutely fine on the lowest settings. And we managed to get a lovely FPS of 157, a 1% low of 111, and a 0.1% low of 78. Admittedly, this game performed better than CSGO, which is a case a lot of the time or they just perform very similar so i was very pleased with the performance this pc had absolutely no issues playing this game even competitively arguing that 157 fps is competitive like i said for you people that only have a 60 hertz display this is going to be more than enough and if you're only a casual gamer you could even turn the settings up if visual fidelity is more your thing so very pleased with valorant it was a lovely experience. Overall, thumbs up from me. Okay, so moving on to Fortnite, we're playing at 1080p Pro settings and we're using the Performance API. We got an average FPS of 124, a 1% low of 89, and a 0.1% low of 64. So this game was absolutely playable and it performed much better than I expected. The Performance API really does help on these lower powered cards or these older cards and it really shows i felt no stuttering no lag and even in secluded areas or inside buildings the fps even shot up to 200 in some instances in order to get the numbers for this video i played three battle royale matches and it was the same for counter-strike i played three death matches and the same for valorant i played three death matches too so just so you know i'm not just testing for like two minutes and going over oh, these other percentiles i got the gameplay is just for gameplay purposes but my testing was a bit more sufficient playing roughly three games on each game and that's how i got my figures just so it was a bit balanced out and neutral and kind of best case scenario i suppose or worst case scenario depending on how you look at it so yeah overall very happy with fortnite if you just wanted a little pc to play fortnite this is more than playable and you'll actually have a great experience so yeah okay so we've got another fan favorite which is gta 5 we're playing at 1080p at high settings with fxaa enabled please bear in mind i also had the the free sliders halfway i forgot what they're even for but i think it's something to do with like the pedestrian and the traffic control and i also had reflection quality at four times and i also had the af setting set to about eight times so very very nice settings as you can see the gameplay looks absolutely great we got an average fps at 62 a one percent low of 58 and a 0.1 percent low of 49 so this game was flawless played very very well and it was a great experience and if you want a budget pc for 84 pounds to play gta 5 then this is a perfect option for you i mean admittedly a lot of hardware can run gta 5 because it's very well optimized but this is much better figures than a gt 1030 which can cost similar price to this whole system absolutely great performance very happy looks great and to be honest this little machine is surprising me very very happy for it and i think it'll be staying around for a lot longer okay so moving on to fallout 4 this is also a, an older game but it is still very popular and it's much better than fallout 76 so <laughs> a lot of people still play this game and this pc ran this game absolutely perfectly with no issues we had a nice mix of medium to high high textures high shaders or shadows we've got the the anti-aliasing option set to the highest which is taa and this game just looked and played absolutely perfectly and we got an average fps of 56 a 1% low of 49 and a 0.1% low of 41 so if you did want to target 
that very stable 60 fps you can just drop some of the settings and you'll easily hit 60 fps to me this was a perfect balance i played this for roughly 30 to 35 minutes and these are the averages I got which were more than playable I had a great experience and there's nothing bad to say about this PC whilst playing this game okay so moving on to my personal favorite game at the moment we've got Forza Horizon 5 playing at 1080p at the medium preset which automatically enables two times MSAA we got ourselves an average FPS of 43 a 1% low of 37 and a 0.1% low of 32. So I've done many of tests with even different graphics cards and 43 FPS, to me at least, is more than playable. I could argue that 30 FPS is playable on this game and I personally think that's also true. However, 40 to 45 is my sweet spot. Obviously, any higher the better, but I do like the visuals in this game. And to me, the medium preset is a perfect balance of performance and visual fidelity and this is what I was happy to play at. So I was very surprised this card would run this game at these settings. Admittedly I got the error message saying the drivers are out of date but that is the case with a lot of these older AMD cards as they stopped getting support two years ago. However you can just ignore the message and you proceed. I did that and actually I started this test off at the very low settings expecting to just about be able to play this game and then I was very surprised to see you know 68 frames per second when I was doing that so I changed it straight to the medium preset and I got an average of 43. I played for about 40 minutes and had a great experience entirely so very pleased with this PC. I mean Forza Horizon 5 medium preset 1080p it's a brand new AAA game yes it is very well optimized what a great experience for such an underpowered machine and such a cheap machine as well. So I'm going to wrap this video up with a quick conclusion of how I thought this PC performed. If it wasn't obvious by now, I'm very happy with it. It performed amazing for £84. Like I said, there's many more games I could test that will bring this PC to its knees. I am more than willing to test these games if you would like to see that. I do highly recommend still considering this a budget option to get into PC gaming as it's simple, cheap and fun. I mean, anyone can do it. You don't need to know a thing about PCs just to open the side panel and insert a graphics card. Let's be honest, there's plenty of tutorials on YouTube. So I am thinking to turn turning this into a, a little series, you know, maybe upgrading, see what upgrade paths we can do. I possibly might buy a cheap i7 4th gen, put that to its paces. We could try other graphics cards in here. I do have a 1050 lane around. They can be quite cheap to get hold of at the moment. I mean, I paid £50 for mine, so it would have been a very good option for his PC. I just wanted to use something different. I've done a video on a 1050 before. I might do some FPS testing with a 1050 up against this R9 360, because in terms of value for me, I paid £42 for this card and £50 for the 1050 and I mean the 1050 will blow this out of the water maybe not by much but it will and especially in Forza Horizon 5 where I've done testing with the 1050 it did play that game on the high settings quite smoothly so it is a bit more powerful but this graphics card is nothing to slouch at it's held up amazingly today and I'm very pleased with it so anyway I don't want to ramble on for too long if you do have any questions, please make sure you put them in the comment section. I will reply to every single comment. So thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Make sure you have a great day. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.